So let's go to our model. I'm going to select my item here and then I'm going to command N to create a new Swift file. Click next. This is going to be our basket. And we create and we're going to use this class to be our basket. So it's class basket and it's not subclass of any other class. And each basket is going to have three things. First is the ID, which is going to be a string. Then it's the owner ID. So we know which user is the owner of our basket, which is a string as well. And then we need items, I, item IDs. So this is going to be array of strings. And why we need this is to keep all the items that are in our basket. We're not going to keep the item itself. We're just going to keep the ID of that specific item. So whenever our user adds or removes something from our basket, we are just going to add or remove something from our array here. Right. And we can, uh, we need to call our initializer here, which is just an empty initializer because we are going to create this manually. And then we need another initializer to create it from dictionary. And you must be familiar with this now because we are using this function, this type of initializer for every class that we have created so that we can get uh, the JSON code from our Firebase and create an instance of this object. So the ID is going to be dictionary. And here we're going to use K object ID and I'm going to specify as a string. It's a little question mark here. Then we have our uh, owner ID and this is going to be again dictionary. And I need to put a key because we don't have this owner ID. So if I just jump to my uh, constants file, I can put here like uh, another comment and call this basket. Uh, let's just copy this thing, paste it here, say K owner ID. This is going to be owner ID. Command B to save this. And uh, let's quickly jump back uh, to our basket. And we need another key, which is going to be our item IDs. So we say item IDs is equals underscore dictionary. And this is, we're going to do it as well. So constants, and we just put it, K item IDs. Okay, um, command B one more time. So we have access to both of them and we can go back to our basket. So the first one is going to be K owner ID as string and second one item IDs is going to be K item IDs as and this is an array of strings. So this is our second initializer and on this our class itself finishes. So we need uh, as with other two classes we need some functions to uh, save and retrieve data from our Firebase. So I'm going to write the function to save them first. After our curly braces, let's put a mark, call this save to uh, Firebase. And it's going to be func save basket to Firebase. Let's call it Firestore since we are saving it into Firestore. And I'm going to provide a basket here, which is a type of basket. Let's put an underscore here so we don't have to type this basket keyword. Okay, so what we need in order to save uh, something to Firebase. First, we need this something. And this something should be in a dictionary format because Firebase doesn't accept anything else. So let's create a function that will convert this uh, basket into a dictionary like we have done with our item. 
Uh, actually, let's copy these all. And let's go to our basket and paste it here. So we say item dictionary from and instead we're going to change the name to basket. Dictionary from basket. And the type is going to be basket. Uh, let me just get rid of all these keys and all these values apart from one of NS copying I'm going to keep. So our object IDs, uh, objects is going to be our uh, items that we want to save, which is basket with a small letter, dot ID, comma, basket dot owner ID, comma, basket dot item IDs. So we have three items to save, so we need three keys for them. But we say K object ID as NS copying. Let me just copy this part. Then we say comma K owner ID. As NS copying comma K items item IDs as NS copying. So this is the function we need. And now we can call our save uh, basket to Firebase uh, function. So here we are going to access our Firebase reference and you may guess it right, we are going to get the basket this time. Then we need to get a document um, and each user, uh, each uh, basket is going to have his own ID. So we are going to create a reference of our basket ID. And then we're going to set data. And our data is going to be basket dictionary from basket. I'm going to pass this basket here so that it converts into a dictionary. And I just need to specify that this is string as key and any as value. And this function will take care of the saving items to Firebase. So it's one line and it takes care of everything. So we have an uh, option to save and we have option to convert item uh, basket into a dictionary. Uh, what we are missing now is a function to download our basket items. So let's do it uh, right here. Put a mark, call this download items. And I'm going to say func, and this is going to be download basket for, uh, not for, from Firestore. And we need to provide some parameters here because uh, we need to know which user basket we want to download. First of all, there is no return here. Let's just get rid of them. So we want the basket owner ID. So we say uh, underscore here, owner ID, which is a string. So we give our function the owner ID and it will go and find the basket that belongs to this owner. And once it does find this basket, we want, because this is going to be in background, we want to have a completion block so that as soon as we found uh, the basket related to the specific owner ID, we are going to call our completion and hand the basket to the uh, completion handler. So we say completion and I say at escaping underscore basket. This is what we are going to return. And this is type of basket. And this has no return type. All right. So again, we are accessing our Firebase reference basket because this is where we are searching for. And here we are going to put a where clause. So we say where, where field uh, is equals to. So our field ID is going to be our key. So we check where the K owner ID is equal to. And we just give our owner ID here that we are passing. So wherever our owner ID matches the given owner ID, we are going to retrieve this basket. 
Let me say get documents. And this has a snapshot, which has a query and an error. So we say snapshot and error. So once we get this information, we want to check if there was a snapshot. So we say if, actually let's say guard, let snapshot is equals to snapshot. Else we are going to first of all call our completion. So we say uh, snap, oh, I'm missing an S here. So I'm going to uh, call my completion and provide nil here. And also I'm missing a question mark next to my basket. Uh, let me just copy this thing and paste it here. Yeah, it look, looks okay. Okay, and once we call our completion, I'm going to say just return so the rest of the function is not being executed. If this is okay, our guard uh, will not do anything. It will just go through and we say if snapshot dot is empty and then we are checking if it's not empty and let's and snapshot dot documents dot count is greater than zero so it means we have some documents in our snapshot it means we have a basket for that specific user so i'm going to uh, use my initializer and create a basket item so i say let basket is equals to basket and we're going to initialize one with a dictionary and our dictionary is going to be our snapshot dot documents because uh, we're getting a lot of documents technically but each user will have only one uh, basket so in our case if there was a match there is only one item which will be returned in our array so that's why we can f say first so we want our first object in our item and we say data which is a string any object and i need just to specify that this is as ns dictionary and this will create a button so uh, not button a basket so i can say completion and i can pass my basket here and that's it and if uh, our snapshot is not empty or uh, our documents count is not greater than zero, I'm going to need an else statement. And in this case, we're going to just again say completion and we pro provide a nil there. So that whenever we have a callback function in any scenario, you want to call the callback so that uh, whoever calls this function is notified that it has done its job.